All right, question number three. Yeah, okay, here we go again. Okay, explain heart-brain coherence. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can, Roland McCready does, is the lead researcher on that at Heart Math Institute, and um, obviously he's the expert and pioneer. And you and ways. you actually worked there, right? Or you? No, no, no. There? I never worked there. I was working in collaboration while I was at the university, and I was close at a project, and then I ended up having to move on from there. Um, but uh, I know Roland as an acquaintance, and he's a very great person. And he's oh, cool. he, yeah. I looked into it, so I can paraphrase it. But for Perfect. all the audiences out there who want the true science, Heart Math has a great uh, book um, that you can freely download at their website that explains the, some of the more seminal studies and how all that works. But if I were to describe it very simply as, as I could, I would go ahead and say that it's a vertical relationship between your heart and your mind. They go into great detail of suggesting that the heart has more projections to the mind than the mind does to the heart. The brain does to the heart. Shouldn't use mind as, as a synonym to, to brain. We'll go over those definitions at a different time. But okay. so the brain has doesn't have as much communication to the heart. The heart has more communication to the brain. And suggesting that the physiology is supposed to be actually heading from the heart to the brain based on the structure of the neuro, neurological pathways. And there's a neurological a brain, they call there's different types of brains. You have gut brain, heart brain, brain brain. You know, so you have these different neurological plexuses throughout the body that facilitate informational processing and, and all these different things. Long story short, it sends signals, when you're in the heart, it sends signals to the brain that interacts with the thalamus that then facilitates a certain wave form of thought processes in the cortex that allows you to function at optimal level. So instead of going from the brain to the heart, it's getting like a jagged energy that's not coherent. Mm -hmm. Things aren't working together, right? You know, you ever get into a restaurant and things are just not working together and you know, it's going to take a long time for your meal to make it to the table yeah whereas yeah. in other restaurants you go in and basically it's humming like a smooth machine plenty of oil in the engine and it comes to you quicker than you expect it, and you're like wow kind of like that and it's so, it, like coherence kind of like in phase maybe yeah so it's a phase so then you can think about they actually do time interval heartbeat per minute and they extract a waveform out of your beats per minute into something, you know, your heart interval, um, heart brain interval, right? Heart rate variability. Yeah. So they do heart rate variability and then I'll extract a waveform from that and data. And when you're in coherence, it's a nice smooth sinusoidal wave. Mm -hmm. And that's when you're in appreciation, love and all these things. And that means that things are working right because the heart's communicating to the brain, your physiology is coming together and your whole body's in a smooth wave. If you can look at your physiology as a smooth wave. Whereas when you're really in anger and frustration or you're in the monkey mind in your anxiety and you're dealing with all these things, it's more jagged. Okay. So it's not working as efficient. It's not as efficient. So you can think okay. about coherence as this, you know, it's smooth and you're operating at a physiological level that allows you to adapt, observe, and function at all, you know, function on all cylinders. And so by engaging the heart and sending those signals to the mind, it facilitates that smooth ability. And the heart rate variability itself changes a lot more. Heart rate variability is a sign of health. So it's more about the waves and how those overlap. And then you can get entropy and overlap phase locking between people who are coherent, who've been together, and then you can take that coherence and go from an individual coherence to a group coherence where people in a group eventually become coherent. Oh. And then it also interacts with energy from the electromagnetic field, different electromagnetic forces, such as the ionosphere and the Schumann resonance to the electromagnetic, um, you know, to solar flares plucking the field of the earth. So there's an interaction at an electromagnetic with our, our physiology as well with coherence. So we're interacting with everything from solar flares to different magnitudes of things to 
So there's a lot going on, but yeah. but it allows you just to understand that that's what it is. It's this going from the heart to the mind. Okay. And this there's way. um yeah. and there's a way to practice that to make that work for you, correct? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think heart math has uh many great te technologies available something you can an app you can plug into your phone and then you just get like an ear clip thing and you can practice and it will tell you how to get better and teach you how to be better at facilitating that connection from the heart to the mind and being in a coherent state physiologically as a as a way to optimize your, your physiology and interaction with the world you're interacting with yeah is there a way to do it without getting their um, app and and device? I mean, there is, and it's a little bit different. So when I there's been times where I thought I was in coherence and I'm in the heart and I'm in a yogic, you know, meditative state, and I in fact was not in coherence. Mm. So it's a little bit different than you would expect. So uh, you might want to look into what that means to you and what approach you'd like to take. Got but, it. But obviously, when you're in a meditative state and you're full of love and, and you're in the present moment, and that it, that's going to facilitate heart-brain coherence. And it really um, allows you to fine-tune techniques to be in coherence in a way that makes sense to you and your physiology, too. So by monitoring yourself, you'll be able to have a better idea. There are other ways. There's plenty of other ways to do it. By hugging your mother. <laughs> by being in a state of love, by being in the present moment and enjoying nature, by seeing the divinity within another person, mm -hmm. by realizing you're not separate from another person and you need to treat that person as, as you would treat yourself. Sometimes you treat even other people better than you would treat yourself. So then by treating yourself with as much love as you would treat others. Um, these are just simple approaches to life, but it's all about that frequency. And one of the things they teach you is to be in a state of love, compassion, appreciation. And that's good for your physiology. So hmm. being alone. Okay, putting, so when you mentioned, yeah. Yeah, when you mentioned uh, a group being in coherence with each other, hmm. are they sharing something in common? Is that what's going on? Well, there, there was a thought that there may you may actually need them to biologically have exchange of their biofield, their electromagnetic field of their body that's produced by the heart. You know, the heart's field is much greater than the one produced by the mind. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But there's some evidence that can occur non-locally, and that was one of the things they were looking at. Uh, we were interested in, and so you know, Rowan really wants to go into that research. Is also looking at. Uh, how the electromagnetic fields around the earth affect the physiology too. So they will find locking and phase locking and overlap in the patterns of those waves that are extracted from heart rate variability from the physiology um, within people of a particular populace over a state. So there's a, oh. so there's a coherence that's imprinted on humanity at time through greater activity coming in such as solar flares and things like that hmm. so there is a, something going on then also there's a little bit of what you consider a collective consciousness starting to be elucidated to more and more within the field of science and that's involving um i think central pattern generators and randomized uh number generators and so they're actually looking at that as well so these are all interesting things that the heart math has taken They're, they've actually taken over that wow. project yeah they're also looking at you know trees and electrical potentials and heart you know coherence with trees and our relationship with them there but as a group level there's many dynamics you can have you can have an overlap of the, of the biofield of the electromagnetic biofield that facilitates entrainment that's one theory you can also have a collective that you're tapping into that facilitates at a consciousness level, a quantum consciousness field level, let's say, talked about the field, that mm -hmm. field's going to, that field's going to affect your physiology as well. 
and that's not necessarily measurable to the extent that we would the scientists would like at this time. Yeah. And then you have the, you know, the galactic electromagnetic stuff going on as well. And there's some evidence that can happen non-locally, which means that you don't have to be in the same spot to become entrained and coherent. It can happen with uh, bonded pairs who've been together a long time. Their physiology can be entrained in, even if they're not in the same area. Wow. Yeah. That's pretty amazing. Yeah. So there's an interaction between this is this physiology is just showing us an interconnectivity to the quantum field, to the collective consciousness, to earth, to all that is really suggesting that are that even at a physiological level, we aren't separate. Yeah. So that's the thing is we're now looking at science as a tool. And now science is starting starting to assist humanity in understanding we aren't separate entities. We're all interconnected. We all have a responsibility for our own reality, for our own life, and what's happening to us. And sometimes it's hard to take responsibility. Sometimes we have to really take a close look at things. And but it's also a time where you you can take that responsibility, and it leads to empowerment. It leads to autonomy. Mm -hmm. And it leads to growth and health. Yeah. yeah. So by accepting that responsibility, you then transcend into a stage where, wait a minute, I can do this because you've accepted that responsibility. Now that's when the changes occur. That's when your life starts to change. And that's when you interact in the field in a different way. And that's when you quit taking a victim, making yourself a victim, you get out of the victimizer mentality and more of a victor. Yeah. You know, that's yeah. the important using interacting with the universe. Yep. So, Instead of life is happening to, to me. Yeah. Life is happening through me. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's happening through yeah. you. Yeah. So. Wow. That's pretty cool. I yeah, want to use this. Heart, I want to put this heart math stuff on and go hug a tree and see what that registers. You should look into the tree research. That would be good. I think, yeah. you know, I don't think the Institute's too far away from you actually. So where, be, where are they located? I, I don't, I, you'd have to look it up online, but yeah. So okay. that'd be, so they're doing interesting tree work there. And there's a lot of, a lot of science behind trees and that's becoming a whole new thing there. And I don't think we're going to look at our relationship with earth differently. So that's another thing. Are we separate from Earth? And I used to tell my students this. And I say, okay, we start, talked about respiration, the physiology of respiration, right? And I walk in, I go, are any of you tree huggers? Any of you not tree huggers? Okay, well, you better start becoming a tree hugger because <laughs> what, is, what is it that trees put out? Oxygen, mm -hmm. right? What do you breathe? Oxygen. What do trees breathe, quote unquote? What do they What do they use in their phys, their photosynthesis process? CO, CO2. CO2. Right? And what do yeah. we put out? CO2. Mm -hmm. So you have that direct relationship there. Yeah. That direct relationship, and so, yeah. and so at a physiological level, you should be a tree hugger. Yeah. Oh, good. Before yeah. my time. <laughs> yeah, before your time. <laughs> the Schumann residence. That's the. The residence of the earth, right? It's a electromagnetic field or zone that's between here and the ionosphere. So it's, okay. it wraps around, yeah, it wraps. So it's, uh, the, it's basically kind of between the earth's surface and the atmosphere. It's an electromagnetic oh, okay. force. And that's a little bit different than the electromagnetic field of the earth. The electromagnetic field of the earth is around it in a way. And that's what gets plucked by solar flares. So you have these two different electromagnetic indices, so to speak. You have the okay. electromagnetic field around the earth, and then you have the ionosphere that's just more towards the surface. And that can communicate at different levels if it's the right frequency. If it's too short, too long, it will hit the earth and come up in the ionosphere and it won't actually wrap all the way around the earth. But when it does wrap all the way around the earth, um, then you can get a resonance where there's an overlap between these frequencies and that creates a, a frequency of electromagnetic force. And then um, that people measure that for indices of consciousness, but Roland would suggest that you really don't want that. The 
Schumann resonance to change all that much, but a lot of spiritual people measure and, and track it at times of high electromagnetic activity when they're feeling a particular way. Mm -hmm. That's what I've read. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, that makes sense. Wow. That, yeah. that was pretty, that was pretty intense for a short little question. <laughs> yeah. A little bit much, so we can try to symbol. No, no, I mean, it, it needed it. I, yeah. I just didn't know how much it needed it. Yeah, wow, but that's I, pretty good. I just wanted to bring that relationship in. I think that relationship to to us at a physiological level and what it is, is yeah. basically showing us, if we could summarize it, that we're not separate. Right? Yeah. That we, we can really tap in. And what's so interesting is science is getting closer and closer to showing us that, to proving us. Yeah. Yeah. And quantum yeah. and all of it. Yeah. Yeah. So it's really on the forefront. Yeah. yeah. Amazing. Yeah. It's beautiful stuff. Yeah. Well, thank you, Jordan. That You're was welcome. Awesome.